Hi, Achim Schlöffel, Inner Space Explorers. Sorry, I know it's been a while, but uh, a lot of things are going on and I just had no time to, to post some videos. And um, so somebody asked me about what is ISE doing in front of a dive? Uh, what kind of S drill? So first thing, there's no S drill in ISE because nobody really understands what this S drill thing is all about. A lot of people have exercises that are called S drill. Some are like a safety drill. Some are like a sequence in front of a dive. Um, but a lot of people mix up exercises, for example, to control the valves or manipulate the valves with safety procedures. And the other thing is that that was taken to a level where it's kind of absurd. I mean, when you go, let's say, for a cave dive and there's another group in the, in the, in the spring pool and after 20 minutes they're still discussing what they have in their pockets or wherever and what they want to do and don't want to do and this and that and you're standing there with your doubles and you're like, God, can you finally start the dive? I mean, that's not the way we want to do it. The other thing is that a lot of these procedures that we see are not um, working in every environment and uh, so the ISE approach is always to keep it as simple as practical as possible and create a clear protocol. So what we have is called the ISE pre-dive sequence and there's a certain, yeah it's called sequence because there is a logic behind it. The first thing I want to do is, and it doesn't matter, I mean usually I do it in the water but for example if I do a trimix dive or if I'm diving in heavy current I can also do that on the boat preferable in the water but it also works on the boat. The first thing is I control if my valves are reachable, I can open them and they are open. So the team captain or the dive leader or whatever you want to call it or the person that's like has the responsibility for the dive is running through that procedure. So the first thing is I reach back, can I reach my valve or if it's doubles from right middle left, I reach my valve so okay I can reach them are they turnable? Because you know sometimes they're stuck, somebody closed them right, like really hard, you cannot open them, so even the other way around. That's not something you want to figure out during the dive. So yeah, they are, I can maneuver them. And they're all the way open. So not like half turn back or something like that, because in an emergency you want them to turn in only one direction, which is close. So if that's done, the next thing is I check my SPG because now I know that my valves are open so now it makes sense to check the SPG. If I check it before, I mean the left post can be open, the center post can be closed, the right one can be closed, the right one can be empty, whatever. You never know if your reading is correct. So now if the valves are open, that makes sense. So I check my SPG and announce to the group, okay, 200 bars, double 12, nitrox 32, whatever. Next thing is I check my regulators. So if I'm in the water, I breathe them underwater. Um, if it's cold temperature, obviously also I breathe them underwater, never on the surface. The reason I prefer to check them underwater is they can breathe fine on the surface, but they can suck water underwater if there's, for example, a little hole in the diaphragm, stuff like that. So I check them underwater, all is good. I'm not doing that with hypoxic gases, please. So now I know my regulators are working, I have full tanks, I can manipulate my valves, all is good. So. The last thing is my long hose. So I unclip my long hose, just free it, show it, okay, fine, put it back. So now that's the very last thing I do before I descend, which means I'm sure my long hose is above everything else. It's not tucked underneath the dry suit inflation hose or the belt or whatever. So I check that, put it back, and then the team can descend. And then we do what we call a passive bubble check, which means every diver in the team has a quick look over his teammates, is there any loss of gas, any significant bubbles coming up, then it's still possible to call the dive like, hey, something's wrong with your gas. If not, everybody's just keep descending. Um, a lot of people are not, not really sure about why we do it, but I mean, the last thing I want to do is I jump in the water, I have that current, whatever, I have my body behind me, taking my, my doubles, pressing him underwater. I mean, you see strange things. I mean, if there's a major leak, I will hear it anyway. And if it's just like some small bubbles, like, I mean, that occasional O-ring on the SPG or whatever, I mean, yeah, then it throws a couple of bubbles. If my buddy sees this and thinks, oh, this can be dangerous, he can still like stop me and tell me, but normally that's not what prevents me from a dive. 
unless it's a major major gas problem. So that's what we call the ISE pre-dive sequence. Uh, we do that in front of every dive, no matter if it's if it's um, a single Caribbean reef dive or if it's a it's a really tough technical dive. I can also do that on the boat. The only thing I can't do on the boat is breathe the regulators on the water. Sure, but as I said, with hypoxic gases, that's probably not a good idea anyway. And um, otherwise, you can use that in every scenario, every possible diving scenario. Uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel in front of everything. What we do not do is things like this equipment matching, pocket matching, whatever. I mean, if I'm diving with my partner, I'm planning a serious dive. The last, um, the last point where I want to check my pockets is when I'm ready in the water. I mean, there's dive planning before. We talked about gas and what kind of gas and how much gas and obviously what we need to bring. So why would I stand? I mean, if, if I have proper education, proper training, and I'm following certain procedures, why would I be in the water discussing the content of my pockets? That's nonsense. I mean, and it's the wrong, the wrong timing. I mean, I can do that when I'm when I'm gearing up, when I'm when I'm preparing my stuff, whatever, but not in the water. And I mean, people tend to, and it's. It's basically against the concept of DIR. You know, you want to keep minimalistic approach, keep it simple and straightforward. And I see that people more and more and more, that's like back in the 80s when I had the backup light for the backup light for the backup light, just more and more and more, and people were diving like Christmas trees. That's not the idea behind it. Clean, simple, fast, efficient. That's what we want to do. And um, doing all of this, standing in the pool or wherever and discussing 20 minutes, is not efficient, it's not fast, and it's not what we want to do. I hope that answered the question. Um, the next video, video we'll see uh, comes from Italy because uh, in two weeks of time we start a big project. We have a virgin wreck and uh, 10 divers from ISE are going there doing an exploration and you'll get a video blog every evening, a little update what's going on and I'll give you a nice introduction when we arrive there. So stay tuned, I hope you like it. If so, Please subscribe to our channel, check us out on Facebook, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.